But we're getting there. We're 0 0.6 inches away from a 7-inch behemoth on your face. Hello and welcome to episode 106 of the Lazy Couch Podcast. We're here to give you all you need to know about consumer tech at the internet and all of the new phone announcements. My name is Jeff Kim and get away from her, you bitch! My name is Kelvin Lee and this week will be one giant magical galactic leap. Well, I uh, like what you did there. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You should try and mash up every week's stories into the intro. It's a struggle. But that it's one made sense. It's a struggle for me every week because I, I started this movie quotes thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you do you actually include the 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 clips of that of those movies into the show notes? Oh, should I? Okay. Maybe, I don't know. I was thinking I about it. Yeah, because I because yeah. when we when when we were prepping, I had no idea what you were doing. Yes, well, I mean, for the learned listeners out there, you would know that that's from <laughs> Aliens, the all time classic sci fi movie, which I got to see last week. Uh, oh yes, 70, 70 mil, seventy millimeter yeah. at uh, uh, Randwick Ritz. Did you enjoy it? It's, uh, I think I believe it's the only cinema in Sydney that has seventy mil projectors. Um, it's 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 been a while, yeah. Um, it's gripping. It's it's got all the cliches. Well, now cliches, but at the time they were groundbreaking stuff. But um, that that last scene when you know Ripley's. Well, I don't know if I want to spoil it for anyone, but you know, go get, get out there and watch that movie because it's bloody good. Am I going to put you in the spot if mm. I ask? you to explain the difference between the 70 millimeter film versus what they usually film it on well 70 mil is the old school uh film film type yeah and basically just has more resolutions and i think at one at some stage movie studios decided that you know we're going to save a little bit of money because people maybe people don't even know that there's lower resolution when you go try to save some money on 35 millimeters so i mean that's that's about you know, my take on things, uh, I think it was to save money, but um, there are some films out there that were filmed in 70 millimeter. A lot of the IMAX mm. uh, film is is 70 or I think it's even more than that. Um, obviously, Chris Nolan's, the Chris Nolan's of the world and uh, who's the other guy? Tarantino. Uh, Tarantino. They, um, you know, when they come into town, especially Tarantino, he'll, he'll always have an event at the Ritz Cinema because that's about the only one in Sydney that has uh, 70 millimeters. That's that's pretty cool. Mm. And uh, just just you know a bit of a tip. And you're you're like a local there, so you should go every yeah every night almost. But um, yeah, they have like these uh, crazy uh, old school uh, classics. So I think over the weekend they had T two for a couple of nights. Yeah, yeah, no, it's also got a mums and bubs. It's a real it's a real good sort of you know family oriented um, cinema. It still looks old school on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so no, I think it's a really quaint little cinema yes a bit smelly but you know once you get over that that's fine yeah um and and quick shout out to kaz Th thanks for uh letting me know about that because that was a really really cool experience i hadn't watched that movie on the big screen before so it was amazing the sound was good too it was like extra i think they had um extra dolby six track surround sound or something like that mm. um, which was um on top of what they normally have so yeah it sounded great cool so, what's uh, what's today's show about, Kelvin? Yeah, so today, um, two real big announcements uh, that happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, one's obviously the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event, which we're going to cover today. And the other one is Magic Leap, the unicorn tech company in AR, VR, MR, whatever you want to call it. It exists? Finally, uh, yeah. What? Finally has a concept. Oh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it's a, a, creative it's a developer's edition. kit. Uh, yeah, yeah somewhat, Christian. somewhat. Uh, yeah, it's a developer's kit. So uh, a bunch of uh, they invited almost everyone from the Wall Street Journal to The Verge uh, to go down to their office in Florida to, to sort of have a go at it. So we're going to cover that as well. Sure. So we're going to start with Samsung's uh, unpacked event, which was mm. mostly around the Note 9, Galaxy Note 9. Um, and as always, we're going to start with our beloved DJ Ko, <laughs> uh, who is the CEO of, <laughs> of Samsung. I love yeah. this guy. Here I love this guy. All right, just just lie, lie down, guys, because yeah. you're gonna like you know have feelings. Not just any smartphone. A smartphone powerful enough to keep up with you wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever you need. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure. 
to present the all new Galaxy Note 9. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I love how Samsung starts with like showing off the new device, whereas, you know, Apple and maybe the other tech companies, they sort of like wait a little bit, they, they build up to it. But, you know, DJ is like straight in there. I don't know. When I listen to DJ talk, I feel mm. like there is someone there just going up his ass. Slower, slower, build it up, build it up. No, 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 tell them. You know what I mean? You should look up. Uh, you should look up on YouTube. Yeah. There's like a really like a clip of um, DJ just being awkward, and it's just like him, be, you know, having silences or there's like a bit of lip smacking. Or, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's hilarious. It goes for about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't clip that one, unfortunately. Yeah, no, 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 no. Maybe one for the outro. Yeah. So, what are your first uh, impressions of the Note Nine, Kelvin? Um, I think initial impressions is safe. Uh, a couple of good things like the battery. You know, I like how the new pen has you know Bluetooth in it now, so it just opens us up uh, to, to a lot of different apps, doing funky things with it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, we'll go through the clips you have, and then uh, we'll, we'll we'll chat more. Yeah. So just in terms of the specs, I guess that's where we should start. Um, comes with a four thousand milliamp battery, mm. which I can't remember if that's more or less than the seven, the blow, yeah. uh, the one that blows up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's more quite subdued with that, right? Though they didn't, they, they called it, you know, all, all day battery or something like that. Something like, you know, what Apple would use. Um, like you said, it's got the, I think the new name for it is Spen. Really? <laughs> or the S Pen. No, it's S Pen. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I like calling it Spen. Yeah, it sounds like Spam. Hey, uh, yes, hand, hand, hand over the Spen, um, which has, yes, Bluetooth. Um, more on that a bit later. Um, what else is there? It's what, what is the processor? It's a Snapdragon 845 yep. processor. That's right. Um, it comes in two megapixel. different... Yep. It comes in two different memory sizes, a... 128 and a 512, if, if I'm not wrong. That's right, yes. They're, they're doubled in size, just like Apple does it. Um, 12 megapixel rear camera. Um, the the fingerprint sensor is not on the where the camera is on, at the back. It's sort of just below that, where your um, yep. you know, index finger sort of naturally uh, gets placed. So that's an improvement. Um, the yep, other... it's, it's, got the, um, it's got that variable aperture camera from the S9 Plus, I believe. Yeah, so that they've upgraded there as well. Now the other, it's not quite a feature, but it does come with the the new phone. And here is Tim Sweeney, who is the CEO of Epic Games, and we know him because he created Fortnite. Um, so there's been a bit of, uh, you know, a bit, bit of a PR disaster on the whole Android and Fortnite thing. But he's uh, Tim Sweeney to address that. So today, there are over 125 million people around the world building bases, gathering weapons, and getting ready for the next storm. And uh, (laughs) judging by the tweets, um, just about every gamer wants to know the same thing. When is Fortnite coming to Android? So uh, about that, we're going to be launching the Fortnite beta on Android this week, and players with Samsung Galaxy devices are the first to be invited, starting right now. Yay! Bye. So I forgot to tell you, Kelvin, that uh, Tim Sweeney is also the uh, the biggest geek in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so here's my little yeah. my little problem with that. With any okay. battle royale game, whether it be PUBG or uh, Fortnite, mm-hmm. you need a large player base because each game consists of a hundred players. If mm. the beta is just for the Note Nines, they're not going to have enough people. So they're going to have to change the yeah, way right. this works. So here's where I got a little bit confused. I listened to that a couple of times. He doesn't really yeah. say it's just for the Note 9. He says they get a beta key for Android, right? But did he mm-hmm. did, did, you, did he say all Samsung devices or is it just the Note 9? He said all Galaxy devices, uh, so including tablets as well. And the S9. On the so Note 9, however, you do... Yes, all the Galaxy, right, 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 I guess, right. I don't know, all the yes. S, S series. Yes. Um, however, on the Note 9, I think especially you get a new skin called Galaxy Skin. Yeah. So there you go. Which is what these games are all about. That's yeah. how they make money. That's right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know who's jump- jumping on it. Like, I don't know. If you're a Samsung or Android user, do you care about games like mobile gaming? I, I feel like you-, you don't really care as much. It's it's a weird one because they must, when when they built this phone, they must have done some sort of, you know, 
customer experience survey or some sort of feedback and, and, and people must be telling them, you know what, or, or the data that's coming back from, you know, all the different users that use Samsung, they must know that, you know, I don't know, some percentage, some high percentage of their phone users are just playing games. Mm, yeah. I've got a little bit on, uh, yeah, back, back to the spend. I'm going to call it, I'm going to keep on calling yeah, that because it's cool. Stick with it. Um, so the director of product marketing at Samsung, um, his name is Jonathan Wong. He's a pretty cool guy. And he did a demo for the Spen. So here he is. The new S Pen has some pretty cool new functions. That's because now it supports Bluetooth low energy to turn it into the ultimate remote control. Yeah, bro. It's not ultimate. Oh. You can use it to play and pause YouTube videos or Whoa. flip through some slides in Microsoft PowerPoint, PowerPoint. while what? working the room. Speaking of working the room, you can even use it to control something much, Your much bigger. girlfriend. In fact, oh. I've been controlling this presentation with my S Pen. What? Uh, he, over, he oversold the remote. it, didn't he? You know what I mean? I think if you if you were there, like it's it's a new concept, right? So I don't know. I, I, we're, I mean, I'm used to Apple. You're probably yeah, used to yeah. Apple a little bit more, so you yeah. don't really carry a like a, a stylus around with you. But I mean, it it does make sense if you think so, about it. To, yeah, to I had I had a Note three. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. years ago. Uh, it, back then, you know, at least I I never found any good use for it. I and I've never seen anyone with a Note use the pen. Mm, okay. I, I just don't. I just don't think. I think. I think. I think. Good on him for sticking with it. But I. I just, it's just not a game changer. I mean, now that you know, with voice coming on board, with facial recognition, with you know, people putting in so much money into how people use touch screens, and we're just moving beyond using a physical item like a mouse, keyboard, stylus, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if this phone is you know supposedly so powerful that you can use it as a desktop or a laptop. And Samsung has does have that product called, I think, Dex, where you can actually, you know, dock it into your, you know, if you have this at in the office, then you can just dock it. Mm. Um, you use your other peripherals like a mouse and a keyboard, and it essentially becomes your desktop using uh, Android OS or whatever the Samsung OS is. Yeah. So, so Dex apparently is not too bad. It looks quite usable, um, mm. but realistically, if you're spending up to you know 1500 AUD on this phone I'm guessing you have a laptop you, I'm, I'm guessing you have a tablet um, the, 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 your phone is not going to be your first work device right mm-hmm. so you said uh, in Australia it's 1500 entry level mm. which is 995 US I, I think yeah yeah so may, maybe just to wrap up because there were some other announcements in the uh, unboxed event or no mm. unpacked event that's what they call it right um, maybe just a good way to wrap it up. I have a uh, Unbox Therapy. Yeah, our, our friends at Unbox Therapy. They're not really our friends. <laughs> <laughs> they they do have like really cool, you know, review videos. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. 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 yeah so I think he's is, okay. Yeah. So the question is, who is the Note Nine for? And here it is. So who is this phone for? Somebody who wants the biggest, baddest, doesn't care about cost. He's somebody who really gets a lot of use out of that S Pen. Look, it's a Samsung device. It's going to be good. With this one, you can make the case that you got the 4,000 milliamp hour battery. You've got the biggest screen. High spec, out of the gate with price tag to match. The speakers are now better as well. The only thing holding this one back is the price. If you can afford it, you might love it. If you can't, you can get a lot of value for a lot less. Do you feel like that's the stock standard review these days for high-end phones now? Every single phone? Yeah. I mean, the price can't keep going up. Well, it has been. <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm just... It has to hit a ceiling of some sort. Um, because what's what's a $3,000, you know, Note 12 going to look like, right? It's going to have a drone instead of a pen. Well, if we're in uh, Australian prices, I think 2000 would be the limit. <laughs> I mean, I almost paid two thousand for the iPhone ten, um, you know, the spec'd up one. Now the yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna is it a good time to pivot to the next? Th- no, no, actually, it's not not time for that. Uh, There's some other Samsung products we need to talk about. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, I I just want to play a really quick clip from uh, Dave Lee, my brother from another mother. Um, have you heard of Dave on on YouTube? No. He's actually he's actually a really good sort of mellow. He's not as he's not as jacked up as the other guys. He's yeah. going to talk about. Is he the guy that put a Something MacBook about Pro? The phone industry, right? Sorry, say again? 
Oh, the, the guy, sorry to step on that. Um, the guy yeah, who put the good. MacBook Pro in a, what it was, a refrigerator. Is that the guy? No, nah, this guy, he's he's very mellow, uh, oh. but he's a very, he's he's got a good vibe to him. I, I like him. Um, I'll, I'll stick his uh, video in the show notes so everyone can check him out. But the hmm. view uh, on, on the Note 9 and why there's just too much hype about it. Okay. Right now, right? Like the fact that, the fact that Samsung is doing this much marketing and this much work to promote a phone that is a relatively minor and iterative change from the previous generation, like this is what we are right now. We have pretty stagnant, like we just, that's what the phone industry is right now. Minor bumps for a huge, huge increase in price. So if you're someone that's, I guess, price conscious or value conscious, then I would skip this phone. It's a great phone. It's the best Android phone you can get on the market right now in terms of like features and stuff, but I would still skip it just because of the price. I think next year when the S10 launches in the spring, that's going to be a big bump in tech, like maybe fingerprint readers built into the screen, lots of more innovative stuff or just seemingly innovative stuff. This, there's no innovation, but it's still the best you can get right now. Yeah. And, and I kind of agree with him, man. It, it pretty much, you know, he agrees with what you, you've said around just, it really is the state of the phone industry where it's just a bit of a bump spec here, a bit of a, you know, camera megapixel go up, you know, variable aperture, but nothing really out there. I think that's why a couple of episodes ago, probably long, uh, you know, longer than that, um, or earlier than that, uh, we talked about a few phones that they were quite innovative. Like one was a, you know, gaming phone hmm. what was another one that was like a, um, was there a blockchain phone? Did I talk about that? Yeah, talk about that. But yeah, that. Like but yeah that, there yeah. was stuff like that, you know, kind of interests me. But like, I guess that's right. This is a run of the mill Samsung. Yeah, a new phone. It's, 12, it's been 12 months. So let's put out a new phone. Actually, they do it twice a year, don't they? Because they've got the, the S series and the Note series, you know, in different cadences. Yeah. And we've, I think the, the screen size is something worth talking about as well. It's now 6.4 inches. I remember when you bought the Note 7 tablet, that was 7 inches. So I bought a Note 7. When did I, when wait, did did I buy you, a Note 7? No, sorry, not the Note 7. What was that Google device called? Ah, uh, the Google... The Pixel? No, it was ah uh, the Nexus 7. Sorry, the Nexus 7. Oh, um, oh that one. Okay. Yeah, which you have sitting in the cat's toilet or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that was 7 inches. Um, it, it was much larger, obviously, with all the bezels. But with, with this whole, you know, curved screen and all, the Samsung can keep it in a small package. But we're getting there. We're 0. 0.6 inches away from a 7-inch behemoth in, on your face. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, more on that later, like if anything's going on your face. But, uh, <laughs> let, let's talk about some of the other yes. devices announced, uh, particularly the Gal Galaxy Home. Yes. So do you, do you have a clip for that? I, I have no clips for this okay. upcoming section. No. So we, we're going to do a speed run. So what I what I have is the Engadget sort of supercut of, of the second half of the Samsung Unpacked event. So what I'll do is I'll play it and we'll pause and we'll talk about some of the things that we're talking about. You want your smartwatch to be connected without always relying on your phone or even your charger. Well, the Galaxy Watch is here. You can choose between two different sizes, any number of straps, and over 60,000 watch faces from the Galaxy App Store. It has military-grade durability and Corning Gorilla DX Plus glass for added strength and scratch resistance. It's water-resistant, which means it's swim-ready. It works perfectly with the new Note 9, or you can use it by itself with standalone LTE connectivity. Yeah, so uh, did you get a chance to look at the, the watches that came? Um, at the event, I'm looking at it right now. Um, they do look quite striking, I've got to say. Mm. Uh, loving the the faces, watch faces. They look quite, I don't know, realistic. Apparently, there's sixty thousand of them. Yeah, that's yeah. How are you going to find anything? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it must be just the uh, combinations of um, what did they call it the, um, <laughs> the all the all the different and, yeah. yeah yeah no totally you know one 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 with a you know pedometer one with a, that that sort of thing yeah. um, so you've got a you've got a you've got an Apple Watch um, and with the Apple Watch it's got that little sort of 
dial or, or crown, whatever they call it, uh, mm-hmm. on one side to help you navigate through the menu. So the way Samsung has decided to do it is they're using the outer rim of the watch face, just like your any high-end tag Hoyer watch, uh, where you can turn it uh, mm-hmm. around the face to, to sort of navigate through through the uh, the menus. Which mm-hmm. one do you think is 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 more workable? I mean, what's the iPhone one like? What's the uh, what's the Apple Watch like? To be honest, I don't really use the crown that much. You don't mm. really need it because you can just sort of swipe in and out uh, from different directions. That does the same thing really. Or you can like if you want to scroll, you just like you know thumb it, thumb it through. Um, I do like this approach though. Um, yeah, it, I feel like people will use that feature a lot more. I mean, the I've actually moved the crown to the other side, um, just because when you're when the, when the crown is um, usually is say on my left wrist, um, mm. it, it would be on the the side that's facing my fingers, yeah. and whenever I'm like you know uh, leaning on something with my hands, my left hand, mm. then it would sort of press against my hand. See what I mean? Right, 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 right. Like when you do so a push up or something, it just eats into the wrist. Yes, every day I do push up. That's right. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I saw this uh, thing or advice from uh, some channel where like. I didn't know you could reverse the side, but you can. So I, I did that. So mine is kind of upside down at the moment, but I think, yeah. So it just goes to show like it's not very user-friendly. Yeah. So just quickly, just to recap, it'll come in two sizes, the usual, you know, smaller one and the large one. Um, it will work with any Android device. And really, if you are an Android user and you're looking for a watch, this is your only option at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone's really stepped out of the whole Android watch game. Uh, Samsung's taken on that mantle, and it's becoming a two-horse race, really. And they've gotten rid of the word gear, I've noticed. Mm. I think I think this is something to do with uh, Google sort of trying to streamline the watch market a little bit i expect them to have a watch at their event uh in in the next few months but we'll just have to wait and see Mm. all right all right next next clip next clip things together bixby amazing sound and elegant design all the sound you just heard came from these 160 Galaxy Homes. <laughs> no one's clapping. <laughs> With the AKG, every aspect of Galaxy Home is engineered to make your music sound amazing. With the six meter high range speakers, they send the sound in every direction. And it has a subwoofer that provides deep, rich bass as well. All right. I mean, what more do you want to know about speakers that has a subwoofer and some speakers that provide sound? I want to know if uh, little little face huggers are going to climb out of the top. Of that <laughs> you're, thing. you're right. I never thought about it that way. And here's what I think was a really dumb. Well, we should probably describe it yeah, for the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, might yeah. not have seen. Ooh. Uh... So the Verge calls it like a cauldron. It's got like three mm. legs, like a tripod. And I mean, essentially, it's like a, it's like a Google Home, the the larger one, that's on three sticks. Pretty, pretty much, but it's black. I think. Yeah. You're not gonna. You not. You can't really get creative with a sound device that has to have 360 sound. It has to be round, so the sound can you know go around, um, and you need to mm-hmm. elevate it off the floor because the subwoofer has to fire downwards, and that's why it looks like a cone. Does that mean the other ones don't have? Or there's less emphasis. I think you need to raise the subwoofer off the ground, or you fired it upwards, which isn't as impactful because it has to hit a solid, mm. you know, floor. Yeah. So I, I feel like Samsung's not very good with speakers in general, just because. Um, I mean, it's just a general feeling I get. Even when I bought the uh, what the soundbar mm. the other day, um, ended up with a Yamaha thanks to your recommendation. Yeah. Uh, but the guy at Good Guys was like, "No, don't stay away from the Samsung ones. They're crap." <laughs> That's what he said. And the guy was Korean as well. <laughs> so you know, you know, patriotism couldn't save Samsung. Um, no, they're, mm-hmm. they're definitely not known in the audio space uh, for their speakers. Um, okay. No headphones really worth mentioning. They're not, in, which is why they had to work with AKG to sort of get some mm. some street cred here because AKG is awesome. Um, the other thing I don't get is they played some sort of orchestric type 
theme song or something powered by 160 you know devices what does that show me you need 160 of these things to to make it fill a room i i, I don't understand the point of that demo it's a big room mind you it's like an arena i think yeah so why even try uh, it yeah 160 mm. is, is that better than 150 sure. you know what i mean like it it, it just doesn't make sense it, it it it's a number too big too small i know it's nitpicking but i just think it's one of those really silly marketing type um demos that don't really affect or impact the consumer decision at all what samsung shock horror kelvin <laughs> Marketing to try to impress you. Yeah. Um, I, di- I think they did have like demo areas afterwards, right? So, I mean, if you're a journalist, you probably would have checked that out. You don't, you're not going to sit in front of 160 g- Galaxy Homes. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah. And, and obviously the other big thing about the, the new uh, Galaxy Home, uh, which is a confusing name in itself because Google calls it the Google Home, is it uses Bixby. Doesn't use, it doesn't use the Google Assistant. Um, and the funny thing is, NKBHD made a joke uh, during April's Fools that Samsung was going to make a device. Um, and if you don't remember, I'm just going to play a quick sort of clip from that a couple of months ago in April. Okay, this is uh, hopefully you guys by now know this is April Fool's Day. Um, this is your yearly reminder not to take anything you read or watch too seriously. I mean, if they made a smart speaker, it would totally be better than this, right? For sure. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, he predicted this uh, all, all the way in April. It wasn't a hard prediction to, to make, to be honest. Um, but, you know, they made fun of it. And I don't know if that would deviate very far from this joke because it doesn't seem very impressive. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hard to say. I mean, they, they're just trying to copy everyone at the moment. Um, Bixby 2.0, I don't know. Have, have you ever interacted with Bixby? What, what does Bixby sound like? It, I, 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 if I remember correctly, it was male, um, so very different to Siri. But the fact that you know Apple can't crack this, I just don't see Samsung cracking this without a proper assistant. And I, I don't know whether they'll just crack one day and just use the Google Assistant, which is so much better than Siri. Samsung does. Um, I mean, they, they do have the luxury of having a lot of IoT things around, right? So, what what is the the big saying? They've got like every every single thing that they make, mm. fridges, toasters, what what have you, mm. will all have uh, chips in them um, that you can probably talk to, and maybe your devices are going to talk to each other, right? So, I don't know. They're they're, they're well advantaged to you know get ahead in this game, but yes, they're, they're not really doing a good job. So the, the one the one good thing about the um, Galaxy Home is it will have um, Spotify on it uh, thanks to a new partnership between Samsung and Spotify. So if you are a Samsung fan, uh, you don't have any speakers at home, and you like to listen to Spotify, this is the device for you. And I think what what is actual integration though, because you you can you know interact with Spotify on other devices. Is, is it just that it's a built in, it's a built in uh, music app? On yeah. Also, things? Bixby can read um, Spotify. So if you tell Bixby to I don't know, play the Lazy Couch podcast, but we're not on Spotify, <laughs> uh, it will play. So there is an API integration between Bixby and Spotify. Um, and I'm guessing Samsung will have to open this up. But, but unfortunately, there's no pricing or availability um, about the device. Um, the, uh, Samsung does say that we'll learn more about the Galaxy Home at the developer conference in San Francisco later this year. So that's also a bit of a... Uh. I mean, the only thing they don't have is like Samsung Music. So I think that they had to partner with someone. Mm, 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 mm. If, you know, Google's have a choice. got one. It, yeah, exactly. All right, I think uh, that wraps it up for Samsung. I think mm. I've had about enough of Samsung <laughs> <laughs> after 32 minutes, Kelvin. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just at this point, we just want to remind you to help us with the show. Um, I probably should have mentioned this at the start, but we did get a bit of feedback from Maynard again. Hey, Maynard. Yes. Yes. Got a massive shout out. Yeah, so I know. Th- we were so shocked about this. Yeah. So did you know that he hosted the last, actually, maybe it was the one before, um, the the Australian Podcast Awards. He he was like the MC for that event, and um, you know he, Maynard's a guy. He's he's a tri- former Triple J personality. Still, you know, around around the traps, does his podcast, but he's he's well known in in the Australian podcasting world. And uh, he he did a little bit of an interview with the the website, um, as in the Australian Podcast Awards. And for the question right at the bottom, 
bonus question. What are your go-to Australian podcasts? And guess what they were? Yeah, so there was Spooky Blokies, Spooky Blokies, <laughs> uh, Tea <laughs> with Alice, and yes. us. The Lazy Couch, yes. So top three, I don't know, maybe in Australia. So thanks. Um, I, ha- I do have a feeling you're just trying to promote us, but I don't know if you actually listen to the show. But let us know. I'm just, um, <laughs> you know... <laughs> No, no, um, we, we, we know he does definitely listen to the show because uh, we were talking about Crazy Rich Asians last in the last episode and uh, he tweeted us saying uh, uh, that's what he, he was meant. waiting for us to have our own movie. So, you know, he's definitely a listener. Um, and I think he's been listening for the last couple of years since we uh, we met him um, all those years ago. Uh, at the very beginning, yes. Um, Spooky Blokies is one of the other podcasts and I really like this concept. Two guys on a bike making jokes about a different suburb every week. So they're recording they're gonna, on a bike. Yeah. They're going to run out of suburbs, right? Yeah. After <laughs> 2,300 episodes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, oh, in, if it's in Sydney or I don't know where they are. That could be in Melbourne, I guess. Um, so th- thank you, Maynard. But um, if you want to help us out, please um, go to iTunes, look for The Lazy Couch and give us five stars. Um, and uh, yeah, like a honest review. Tell, tell us what you really think. Yeah. Just just not bad. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, over to Magic Leap. Yes. The tech unicorn. The tech unicorn. You uh, you got a kip, clip to uh, kick us off? Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Here's The Verge. And it's just the Magic Leap 1 Creators Edition explained. Okay, so the Magic Leap 1 does look and feel great. The main part's a headset called Lightwear. It connects to a miniature computer called the Light Pack, which you clip on your pocket. You can use it with this controller or with some limited hand motions. The headset's studded with cameras that track the room, and the lenses have something Magic Leap calls a photonics chip. Practically, this creates the illusion of 3D images projected into the real world, which you can walk around and interact with. Yeah, so I probably should have started with what Magic Leap was. It's a company that's been around for a few years. Uh, there's, they're based in Plantation, Florida, which is just outside of Fort Lauderdale, apparently. Um, and they've famously raised over $2 billion. They have 1,500 employees working on this thing. And it's finally here uh, as of last week. Uh, we've, been, we've been talking about this company probably for at least two years. Mm. Um, there were a lot of you know really impressive videos of whales jumping like in in a gymnasium somewhere um, to, you know, little elephants in your hand. Um, And yeah, a lot of the the people that we trust um, have seen the technology and that they talked about it. Um, Not not that we trust Shaq for technology so much, but he he sort of, you know, raved on about how um, it would change the, the way you watch sports, for example. And yes, as of as of last week, it's it's finally here and it's um, available for most of developers uh, for two thousand three hundred ninety five dollars. That's right. So it was founded by Ronnie Abovitz in twenty ten. So it's it's had mm. a good eight years to to come to get to this stage. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yes. Yes. Go ahead. Just just on that though, um, Ronnie's uh, because because you know everyone thinks of this as a unicorn of the tech world um and i I love i love this uh, quote from somewhere or other it's a magic leap is either brilliant or complete bs so ronnie's um main mission for this particular product was uh to prove everybody why you know that there was a reason for the company to exist so i think this is you know take it for what it is because it's not um from all the reviews that are coming out on on youtube and and you know we're going to play some clips from all these reviews it's it's not mind-blowing but it is still the best in class in terms of augmented reality um, that you wear on your head so yeah i mean and, it, and it's only available in six cities which is really? kind of crazy right yeah yeah so the, the cities are chicago la miami new york san fran and seattle so you know somewhat of uh tech hubs there but um apparently if you're outside of those uh cities you can't you can't order them what yeah. Um, I mean, considering that, you know, that their largest investors are Google and at and I would think they would have gotten a bit of help with the distribution. I think they want to, you know, go go slowly here. So they've, they've seen the disaster that was Google Glass. I don't know what else is there. There's like uh, Snappables. No, yeah. what were they? Spectacles. <laughs> Spectacles from Snap. Yeah, but, but, but um, also there's HoloLens, which is 
arguably their biggest competitor um and and they they're not yeah just afraid you know what i mean yeah i mean this this um is better than the hololens in terms of the specs like in terms of the field of view and um, the comfort level um a lot, lot of the people that tried out this thing they talk about how comfortable it is surprisingly so um the hololens i've tried the hololens on it's you know it's, it's heavy you kind of like notice it that's on your head but like this is a little bit smaller not as awkward but still awkward yeah <laughs> um yeah but i, I mean I'd, I'd love to try this thing yeah me too um do you have clips yes or... uh, and it's quite funny i think i was watching all this the videos and it's a very tightly controlled pr push you can mm-hmm. say these things you can do these things you can't show the videos that are coming out of of the 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 the, uh, the device i think they're mm. afraid of you know with with all the hype that's been surrounding this company for almost a decade now to just see a 2d thing you're not going to get it um, but you know what i think they should have given the general public you know some some so- well you know what's happening now though like in the last say 18 hours yeah because people are actually getting their hands on these things devices because it was available as of last week yeah and they're posting because that you know ronnie didn't say hey once you get this don't post you know footage from these things so they're actually putting footage of these things yeah and, recording the video and posting them on twitter and from a pr perspective that's a lost opportunity right you had an opportunity to let you know people like uh the video about the play from the wall street wall street journal to 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 be those people uh, and control that message a little bit. So, the other sure. the other funny thing is everyone who 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 sort of uh, you know reviewed these devices were all just millennials, and I think Joanna Stern had the funniest take on it. So uh, yeah, here she is. Dramatic music. Tiny little LeBron James just came out. That's all right, dinosaur. Why is there no poop emoji? Okay, let me explain. That's me, looking like a total nut job. And that's Magic Leap's much hyped augmented reality nerd goggles. I mean, Magic Leap's one creator edition. A few weeks ago, I went down to sweaty Florida to the company's headquarters. I strapped on the new headset and its computer fanny pack and saw some pretty incredible things that blurred the real and digital world. Only one little problem. You're watching this video on a 2D screen which means I can't show you all the awesome things I was able to see. Plus, the company didn't let me record what I saw through the headset. All they gave me were these short marketing clips. Who is that guy anyway? But fear not, I can draw, sort of. Yes, I decided to draw what I saw during my experiences with Magic Leap. So yeah, be sure to check out the clip. It's quite funny. I mean, they're obviously poking fun at the PR people um to to not allow them to actually show the recordings and she had to pencil draw like a dinosaur uh into the video which is funny so hang on do do, are you saying joanna stone is a millennial isn't she she sounds like one no she's definitely not she's been around for a while yeah but so she's at the wall street journal the way she talks like nerd goggles oh you're right you know what i mean i think she's trying to obviously appeal to the younger crowd here people the, the fanny pack. The fanny yeah. pack. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Um, what comes in the box? Uh, you get the the light. What they call it? The light pack. Yeah. Oh no, that's a that's a thing. That's a, that's a fanny pack. <laughs> um, but every everything's to do with light. So the actual technology, as I believe it is, you know, your your um, the the way it works is how we see things is just photons hitting our, I guess, our lenses in our eyeballs, and then. Our brain somehow translate that. So somehow Ronnie has managed to um, intercept that process, and this is what's happening. Like, you know, it, it's creating virtual photons that hit your eyes, so it's made to look like it's real. Um, doesn't sound like they've quite uh, cracked that yet, but I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm still excited about these guys because you know this is a first iteration. Um, let's say another two years, I'll bring out version two. That's going to be probably half the size, a lot more resolution, a um, lot faster, better quality, um, be- be- you know, better quality photons hitting your eyeballs, photons. maybe. Uh, well, that, that's what it is. That, mm. That's what the, the light field technology is. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, pe- people that have tried it, they, they literally, like before this product came out, they literally said they, they felt like there was a real object in front of them. Hmm. Because right now it, it's, it's sort of like a hologram, right? It, it, they're kind of transparent. They're kind of blurry in the edges. And I think that's just d- due to the computing power. But like if you try the full thing, which, you know, runs on uh, PCs at the size of like a fridge or something like that, then yeah, the technology actually comes to life. So it's just a matter of, you know, miniaturizing that, you know, the, the processing power, um, but the, they've got the technology for sure. And I, and I also want to talk about the, the competition out there. I mean, the both of us have an Oculus Rift that is owned by Facebook. There is HoloLens owned by Microsoft. And there is the HTC Vive device that has a very close relationship to Steam. Now, all those are big companies with stuff to sell. Whereas Magic Leap is, you could say, is for the technology. It's, it's for pushing us forward because they're not bound by having to sell stuff. So if you want to back a company that is for the technology and are technology purists in that sense, they're the only ones out there. In terms of tech, yes, I believe so. Um, they, they do have the secret source. So, I mean, this is a bit of a risk for them because getting this out there might be you know, copied by some Chinese company. And I did have some clips of uh, random Chinese startups that are going into this space, but I, I won't go into that today. Um, so, yeah, that, that is a risk for them. Um, now the head, not the head. So in that wall street journal, uh, video mm. that you just played, um, was also a little, little bit of a interview with Sam Miller, who's a senior director at, uh, at magic leap. Um, and Joanna asked him how long before AR is in, you know, the glasses that we wear every day. And this is his response. I, I can't say exactly when, but that's the, that's the goal that we need to get to. Even today in our labs, we're working on driving down the size of this. That's our explicit goal for the next version of the hardware. That's our goal is to make it smaller and smaller. Until then, Magic Leap is something you're going to want to try out, whether through your early adopter friend or the pop-up stores the company plans to launch in the coming months. Yeah, so that last bit's kind of interesting. So I think with the six cities that's currently available in, they'll, they'll open up some more pop-up things. So I think that's their sort of business model, marketing model, to get it out there, but um, you know they've been able to, I think, successfully launch this product finally. Um, and and th- those like me that have been enthusiastic in the past, I think it sort of validates that sort of thinking. Um, I, I don't think they've done anything wrong here. I don't, I don't think it's a misstep because it does like like you know Ronnie's whole aim for this p- particular thing was just to prove to everybody mm. that it exists. So. The pop stores are, are going to just be field marketing, right? I mean, surely they don't, they don't expect people to walk to a store and just go, here's 2.2 grand, take my money and give me a dev kit. Well, if there is a technology hub somewhere in your city, <laughs> do you see where I'm going hey, with this? Hey, good segue. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, so that's our next story. Do we have time for this? Yeah, I think we do. Um, yeah, just go. Just go. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Sydney, um, mm. our beloved city. And uh, during the week... Premier Gladys, I'm not going to say her surname because I could never... Yes, please say, say her last name, please oh, say her last uh, name. Gladys Berejiklian, how's that? I feel like I feel like that's the new sort of test for uh, TV presenters. Oh, that's, yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, yeah. she announced this thing during the week. We're announcing today that with the help of Scott Farquhar and the Atlassian team and all the stakeholders here who I'll introduce, we are establishing a new technology innovation hub right here between Central and Everly. This will be the home of 10,000 new jobs into the future. It will be Australia's version of Silicon Valley. We'll make sure that every person uh, around the world wants to work here. Uh, yeah, that's a bit cringy when she says, you know, our version of Silicon Valley, but, you know, like, how else can you describe it, right? Mm. Yeah, so Everly it, area, do well, you, are you familiar with that area? I'm actually looking at the maps right Ew. now. It's very close to the University of Sydney. It's close to Newtown. It's very close to where I live, so I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not, there's not much happening out there at the moment. Yes, yeah, so I think for a number of years, the New South Wales government has earmarked that area because it's sort of like, it's got the old rail yards and, um, you know, there is a little bit of uh, public housing that used to be there that they've, I don't know, I probably shouldn't say, but like kind of cleaned up. Um, the area is very gentrified. I was actually there a couple of weekends ago. Um, there's, there's this like amazing uh, cafe, breakfast place, um, 
right in the middle of it. And um, like I, I hadn't heard of it before. It's sort of hidden away. It's called Henry Lee's, another lost brother of yours, I think. Yeah, obviously. Henry, yeah. So that I, I would recommend that. That, that was like really, really great uh, breakfast. Um, but yeah, that, that whole area is going to change. Um, apparently, uh, there's a lot of, I've seen like a creative agency set up there. Um, mm. You've got apparently some startups there already. Um, so it's um, not clear though whether Atlassian will be moving in there or not. But isn't this the Australian tech park, uh, full full disclosure, CBA moving into there soon? No, no, no. This is, uh, no, no, this is north of there. This is not Redfern. Oh, north. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so it's gotcha, just between gotcha, gotcha. Central and uh, Redfern. Yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, so it's more but on the... But they're very the, close. Yeah. Th- that's right, yeah. It, it's sort of they're on opposite sides of the rail track, pretty much. Hmm. Um, this this is slightly closer to the city, I think, this one. But um, yeah, the technology park, yes, yeah, you're right. Um, Combank sort of uh, trumped, to use that term, Atlassian a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, Scott Farquhar was mentioning that announcement. He's one of the CEOs and founders of Atlassian. Um, I've got a clip of him as well, but he's, yeah, he's, it's not too clear whether, like, not that I could see, um, whether Atlassian will be moving into the area or not, because they're still look, looking for a, you know, bigger base. Um, but here's yeah. Scott Farquhar on what he thinks. I couldn't be more excited. I want to thank the Premier and everyone involved uh, in getting this off the ground. Uh, I think today we sent a really strong signal to the world uh, that Sydney is open for business, uh, for technology, uh, which is the largest industry on the planet. Actually, I wanted to talk about that last statement. Tech- is technology the largest industry on the planet? Is that true? Well, I mean, you would think that uh, natural resources still has a to play especially in australia um uh-huh. but what doesn't have technology right so it's a bit of a wide sort of ranging comment it could cover anything so i'm quite sure the lawyers would have vetted that comment <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean scott and uh his partner um god um <laughs> is it tim um anyway the, the two of them they they left uni they, they went to unsw they i think they yeah kind of quit after second year or something and they started this company I think they're actually a couple of years younger than me as well. Mm. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing story for them, but, um, you know, they they are pretty much the richest, um, couple of, couple of, yeah, well, young, young people in Australia at the moment. And, and just to close off the story, this is why it's so important to Gladys as well, because a couple of years ago, Google's main HQ was meant to be in Sydney. Um, I think it was on Glebe Island. Um, and, for Google to get on board, they told the government that you, you're going to have to build some infrastructure like, you know, better transport, better cycling. And the New South Wales government didn't sort of, you know, pull their weight uh, or, 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 you know, commit to that. So they left uh, for Melbourne, I think Geelong or something. So it was quite an embarrassing move. Uh, well, they're, they're, and I hope... They haven't quite left. They're still in Sydney, like in Piedmont. Yeah, they're still um, in Sydney. Um, yeah. So they, they actually, I mean, that would be a massive move if they were to move cities. Um, yeah. Because it's you know that that's there's overhead in that for Google, but I guess you know they've got money, I suppose. But yeah, um, the 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 place you're talking about is White White Bay Power Station, and that's sort of just yes, south yes. of Belmain. Yeah, but there's no no um, public uh, in- infrastructure there at all. So yeah, why why would you move there? That's right. Mm. That's right. But, um, but overall, I hope it makes Sydney more livable uh, because we're we're very behind on public transport. Um, all we do is build highways. So you know, hope for the best. Yes, um, there, there is a lot of criticism though, because I, I think I do want to just mention that quickly. Because um, mm. if you're going to build a technology hub, you shouldn't sort of build on top of where hub like other hubs are already. Like, don't, don't you feel like you, you know it should be elsewhere, like a little bit outside of the CBD, or like you know, not that I want it to be in Parramatta or anything like that. But it just um, you know other other models or other cities that have used this model. Like uh, I think Denver was was an example of, of recent. Um, you know, moves like this, um, and it's it's not in the you know place where hipsters hang out like like usually is. Mm. It's it's in a brand new place, and it sort of builds up the economy in that area. So anyway, that, that, there's a bit of bit of criticism in this move because like like yeah, that that area is already vibrant already. Like it doesn't need to be gentrified or 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 what. Like may, maybe create a new brand new area where you know that could be the magnet for people to work in. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, if you look at Silicon Valley and San Francisco, they're, what, 45 minutes an hour away or something? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's one model to follow. Yes, um, I had a couple other things, but I think uh, given that it's around 50 minutes, we should probably close there, Kelvin. Yeah, so uh, thanks for listening in. We hope you uh, enjoyed listening about the latest phone coming up as well as the latest thing you're meant to put on your head to look at stuff with. Um, learn about that and so much more um, on the website. That's thelazycouch.com. You can search for us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and one day maybe even IGTV. Who knows? Um, my name is Calvin Lee, and that's Calv out. IGTV? I don't think so. Jeff out. <laughs> one day. I said one day. No, I want to no. see us there. I just, I just, I just don't know how. I just don't know how. I haven't gone into IGTV Have for you been... ages. I know, right? I mean, it's sort of, it sort of had this real, like, you know, pick up, and then it just died to nothing. There's not a lot mm. on there, to be honest. I was watching this uh, astronomy guy, like on YouTube, and he was like, um, I think he had the camera, like his SLR camera that he's recording the video with. Um, uh-huh. but it must have been some sort of live thing. So, like, he said, "Oh, oh sorry, this, this is on IGTV mode." <laughs> And then you have to move it to, <laughs> to landscape. <laughs> landscape and portrait. Yeah. Uh, I see what you mean. So these are the, that, that's, you know, creator life these days. Yeah, but one in portrait. Portrait videos. Yeah, yeah don't worry for that. All right. Was that some background I noise think there? I think there was a truck or something at uh, my apartment. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah.